Hello everyone, this is Derek from Corax Training and today we are going to talk about my favorite thing in the world, PCCs. So let's take a look at my top five PCCs. Number five is the kel Sub 2000. Now this gun is uh, on the list purely for sentimental reasons. Uh, a friend of mine was kind of famous for using these uh, guns in USPSA in the PCC division and uh, unfortunately he, he passed away tragically and so to sort of honor his memory we all picked up a sub 2000 and are just kind of having fun with it. Um, you know that being said kel has a pretty interesting product here. You can see its main claim to fame in action right now. It folds in half. So it is a full 16 inch barrel, but essentially collapses down on itself. This is the Gen 3. So for the Gen 3, kel did make a few upgrades. A company called M Carbo was a pretty famous maker of aftermarket parts for the Sub 2000. And for the Gen 3, kel basically just included all of the common upgrades right out of the box. So. Uh, better trigger, better uh, mag or action release. Uh, it's ambi now. You can lock it back on the left or right. A bunch of other little things. It's just included out of the box. It is threaded half by 28, so I have uh, you know just a competition style break on it. But you can put whatever you want on there. And they learned about two degrees of freedom uh, in their design. So now not only does the barrel flip back but it also twists to the left or to the right so as you can see I have an optic mounted here um, and I don't have to change its relation to the barrel so it stays zeroed I can just twist the twist it back into place rotate it left or right when uh, you're folding it or unfolding it so sub 2000 it's nine millimeter it takes Glock mags and uh, it's just a fun Fun gun to have around, and if you actually do take one of these to the competition, any competition, I guarantee you, you will get comments about it. So that's number five. Moving on to number four is the PSA AKV. This is really just a stand-in for any AK style 9mm uh, PCC. Um, I'm sure the, the KUSA, KR9s, KP9s, same idea. I went with the PSA because it takes Scorpion pattern magazines instead of proprietary magazines, which is just to me the better idea. So Scorpion pattern magazines are uh, fairly inexpensive and they're fairly available and a bunch of different companies make them. So that's why I went with this guy. Uh, it is a direct blowback gun, so it kind of looks kind of sort of like it has a gas system and a gas tube here. It doesn't. It's just a big heavy bolt that moves back and forward on a pretty stiff recoil spring. But for a blowback gun, it's pretty smooth. Uh, in my opinion, it's less violent than the AR9, sort of standard AR based uh, direct blowback guns. So that's pretty nice. Of course, I have the ALG uh, AK trigger in there. Um, it does come with a bolt hold open because it uses Scorpion magazine. So again, that's a pretty nice feature to have, especially in co competitive use. And then it also comes with sort of the enhanced safety. So it's easy to um, take off on the beep and it's easy to put back on if you need to do that sort of thing. So that's number four is the PSA uh, AK9. Moving on to number three, I got to admit, this one is uh, <laughs> purely based on my childhood and the media I consumed during my childhood. This is the FN PS90, which has been cut down as a factory 10.4, I think, inch uh, FN barrel uh, with a um, Silencer Co. ASR adapter on it so I can run a suppressor. You guys know why this gun's on the list, right? Yep. Okay, <laughs> uh, I was a big nerd, big fan of Stargate, 
And um, as soon as I realized that they sold these guns and I was old enough to buy them, uh, I had to buy one. So this is in a very original uh, Gen 1 gun. It actually has the original uh, sighting system. These are getting pretty hard to find here. Um, and it has the black reticle. And uh, it's a pretty pretty cool gun. Uh, the trigger's kind of bad. <laughs> if you've ever shot one, you understand that. It really was made to be a machine gun, neutering them as submachine guns or as semi only. Uh, sub guns uh, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. There's still a blast to shoot. Uh, the brass ejects out the bottom, so the gun is lefty friendly. It's one of the few bullpups that really is. Uh, Lefty friendly doesn't matter the safety can be manipulated either way Brass goes out the bottom the magazines are pretty cool five sevens a cool little round at least for fun Again, I, I wouldn't use it for home defense or concealed carry or anything, but You know, it's just fun to have around fun to have in the collection definitely a top five Let's say PCC slash PDW because it was really designed as a PDW. So that was number three. On to number two. It's got to be the current king of competition. If you are looking for a purely competition based PCC, look no further than the JP5. It is king. It's number one. It is the undisputed champion. There is no better PCC for USPSA or two gun or any competition that allows PCCs. I have multiple videos on the JP5 if you want to learn more, but it essentially it is an AR pattern gun that takes Glock magazines and uses the bolt, barrel, and recoil system of an MP5. So it is delayed roller blowback, and um, that makes it the softest shooting, smoothest um, action type available for 9mm PCCs. It is definitely the king, no questions, hands down. So why isn't it number one? Well, you know what's coming, right? Could number one be anything other than the HK MP5s, MP5 clones? I don't care what you call them. They are the coolest submachine gun to ever exist. They are the best submachine gun to ever exist. And they make pretty darn cool semi-automatic only pistol caliber carbines. So here I have my reverse stretch. So this is not an MP5K. It actually only has the front end of an MP5K, but it has the rear end of a full-size MP5. And um, in HK clone circles or HK circles, that is called a reverse stretch. I did that because I wanted to minimize the amount of parts I needed to keep on hand. And so by maintaining sort of the full size rear end, I could, didn't have to stock a lot of case specific parts, which I wanted to do. So that means I can use all of my standard grips, triggers, stocks, all that stuff from normal MP5s and don't have to get K specific ones. How do you know if you have a reverse stretch? The easiest way is to look right here. If you have a single pin on the bottom, you probably have full size parts. If there are two pins, if there were a pin on the top and a pin on the bottom, that's K parts. Uh, just visually looking at the trigger pack, you can, act, you can see a difference if you know what you're looking for. That is a full size pack. The K packs are smaller. And then everything else is a, a little bit smaller. Recoil springs, you know, all the internals and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's my reverse stretch. I've had that gun for a very long time. Rocking the Silencer Co. Omega 9 and an Aimpoint. It's a super fun uh, PCC PDW to bring out to the range. It's very quiet with subsonic rounds. It's a blast to shoot. And this is my full size. This was my primary competition gun for, I don't know, eight years, nine years, 10 years, whatever, a really long time. This gun legitimately has over 200,000 rounds on it. No major parts breakages, just normal wear and tear on springs, 
you know, springs, uh, they wear out. So you replace the springs and it just keeps on running. Yeah, the only, why did I switch? Well, again, multiple videos on that, but it's mainly ergonomics. You just can't argue with the superior ergonomics of the AR platform over the kind of janky 50s inspired uh, German stuff. I love this gun. I still shoot it on occasion for fun, but for serious competitions, uh, you got to use the JP5. So it is still very much set up for competition. I can grab this whenever I want and uh, rock and roll, but... For now, the JP5 is king, but that doesn't mean it's number one on this list. Number one is definitely MP5s and all of their derivatives. So, do you have a favorite PCC? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.